uh, we're going to watch one more video. The real reason why tech hiring is slow down surprisingly, I'm not sure if it's AI related, but I did think it was something that was worth looking at in case you were looking for a job. Um, we're going into overtime. And let's take a look. One's talking about the two real reasons tech hiring is struggling because despite what the NVIDIA CEO is telling you, don't even learn to code anymore because you could just use our GPUs and write everything with AI. That's not a reality yet because GitHub Copilot and ChatGPT, they have a hard time closing parentheses for now, let alone editing a code base and understanding it a million lines and being able to reliably make changes that actually work. So we're a long way off from that. And that is not currently at least driving the uh, tech hiring downturn, which has been going on for quite a while now. So the things that most people aren't talking about, which are the clear economic drivers of this, which if they're reversed can overnight really turn things around are number one, the end of ZERP or the zero interest rate phenomenon. And number two, something barely anyone even knows about, which is section one. 174, the change to the tax code. Now we're going to get into both of these because if you're trying to break into the industry, if you're deciding whether it's worth it to still learn, then it's really important to have your eye on these two things. Because again, if they change, it can have an overnight surge back to hiring. And in fact, we'll talk about the AI thing a bit more, but we do have reason to believe that if anything, that's going to expand the tech industry. And while each developer will, of course, become more productive as they already have, this may actually change the nature of what coding jobs are to an extent, but doesn't necessarily mean that software engineering jobs are going to be eliminated. They're just going to be slightly altered in the way that new... Woo! I like the sound of that. Let me see. Yeah, make me more productive, man. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Let me, okay, there it is. I like that one a little bit better. Make me more productive. So yeah, we have one guy saying that the job, I, I do agree. I promise you guys, uh, unless AI really does take our jobs next year, which would be insane. Like that would be that would be record breaking time. The hiring cycle goes ups and downs and there will be a time. Mark my words, hot take. Hot take. There will be a recession after after this year, maybe next year, right? Maybe the year after that, there will be a boom in the economy. There will be a time where companies are hiring again, even new grads. I don't know if there's going to be one after that, but I do foresee a time period where they are hiring new grads in the future. I think thinking that AI is going to take all of our jobs is still, is still just too optimistic is my guess but let's see and if it does happen you know it is what it is like some people are saying in the next five years like but we'll see programming languages new frameworks and paradigms have made people more productive in the past so let's start by quickly touching on zerp interest rates were near zero for a long time so the cost of capital was very cheap it was basically free to borrow money with debt and your risk-free return that is with treasury bonds and similar was basically zero so that combination led to people making slightly more risky equity style investments namely venture capital which drives a huge part of the tech industry this is the big reason salaries in the u.s are much higher than other countries when it comes to software engineering, software developer salaries, because the industry is basically inflated by all this money flowing into it. Now, when there's less overall money 
coming in, of course, that's less of a budget or spending on developers, reinvesting and similar. And more of that money is flowing to the risk-free investments because when you do the calculation on return, you of course have to factor in the risk and we can get mathematical about it, but that is the high level overview. And this has been well documented across history where lower interest rates basically mean that certain industries get inflated. Now, the cause of this, of course, inflation was high. The rates went up to combat that. And therefore, you know, it has this downstream impact. However, this is not a permanent state of things. Ideally speaking, if things were to return to their, let's say, last 30 years average, then that trend could be reversed. Now, the other economic pressure is the Section 174 tax law. Now, just to briefly cover it, basically, there was a change to the tax code where software engineering uh, salaries and any investment into software development is now counted as R&D that has to be amortized. Now, what this means is even as crazy as it sounds, developer salaries, you cannot deduct them as a tax expense. So if you're a startup and you want to hire one developer at 100K a year and you make 100K profit in the past, you could fully deduct that salary, meaning you'd have zero profit for that year and pay zero taxes. However, under section 174, you have to deduct that salary over five years. So you can only deduct 20K in year one, meaning you have to pay tax on the remaining 80K in that first year. Therefore, like Ooh, I see why they're firing all of us. <laughs> they're laying us all off because it's no longer good for business, man. The industry can be so elitist and like, it sucks. Like, that's just how it is right now. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'd love to see the laws change. Go to your representative. <laughs> let's say your tax rate is 40% on that 80K, you have to pay around 33,000 of taxes, meaning now you would have a loss of 33K rather than a break even profit. So of course you can deduct it in the following years. However, that's very difficult as a startup and it's even difficult as a larger company, though there can be certain you know tax benefits to this style of amortization. It puts a lot of short-term pressure on how much you can actually spend. All this is to say that this is an additional pressure driver on the industry at large because now you have to think long term and really second guess how you're reinvesting your profits and your revenue because there are more tax implications. So this is. Yeah, uh, I think it seems like from my experience, startups have an incentive to try to like go into debt and spend as much money as possible. So it does seem like this not familiar, not the tax guy, but yeah, it does seem like this could be a problem for the entire industry, whether like these big behemoth companies have to pay for them. Um, but hey, I think, uh, I think, I don't know, the big companies will all be, be able to afford to take more risk. But yeah, this does definitely make sense with the inflated market in America compared to other countries. I guess that's why everybody wants to come to America. Particularly devastating to startups. However, it again puts that pressure on the entire industry where now a software developer in the short term is much more expensive from an overall cost standpoint. You might be thinking, okay, companies are just going to go overseas. However, for overseas development work, you have to amortize it over 10 years. So it gets even worse. There is a movement, let's say, to repeal or edit this nonsensical new legislation that went into effect right around when the tech layoffs started. That was tax year 2022. So people are moving to repeal it, to change it because the implications are pretty devastating. However, that still hasn't happened. So if we cross our fingers, keep an eye on it, this could also relieve some of that pressure on the industry, bring back a surge of hiring and similar. So what exactly do you do at this point? Because of course, these two things seem pretty 
bad. You could just look at the AI stuff, completely give up. However, at this stage, I don't think that's a great idea still. Number one, because what's really your alternative? AI is putting pressure on every industry. And while yes, software development, breaking into the industry before was almost too good to be true, where you could just not have a degree, teach yourself and then break in and be earning 100K. It's still good. It's still possible. However, yes, in the current state of things, it is a bit harder. That is also affecting the supply side, though. People's sentiments around it have changed. Bootcamp admissions and sign up. So I have a video coming out this week. It should be talking about how I got a job with no, uh, I didn't have experience, but how, I, if I had no experience today, right? And I had to get a job today, how I would go about that. And spoiler alert, it's just, you can buy a course on a highly sought after language like wrestling, which the White House is urging people to program in and then learn how to program open source. If you're a go-getter and a hustler, that's going to be the hard. That's going to be the hardest path. Um, if you want to self-teach, and you're going to need a lot of time. Honestly, yeah, breaking into this industry is hard, but it's doable if you have the right mentors and have enough free time to really study. But um, Yeah, also learn how to use the AI. You might be able to start your business without going to work. <laughs> ...have gone down. So if you're kind of willing to go against the crowd at this point, if you're willing to bet on the recovery and still learning now, you could be in a very good position in the near future for breaking in once things do recover, which I do think will happen. Now, before we talk about AI, there is simply one thing that I have to be blunt about. Now, more than ever, when you get those interview opportunities, if you're spending all that time applying, when you get your shot, you cannot waste it. Rather than casually doing leak code programs and watching videos on YouTube. I do think it's a great idea to do something a little bit more serious and comprehensive, like interview prep by interview kickstart. This is a multi-month program that will really take you through link. And now let's continue. There's sort of an asymptote line. So I've done interview kickstart. It's like 10 grand, 20, 10, 20 grand. I have not, I've seen it, but I heard of it. And that might be a great way to, uh, to get started as well, but you can paying a lot of money and you're going to have to study a lot. And so might be worth the investment to get, um, get um, connections at industries, but yeah, being in a fan company is not as worth it as you think. You may have the nice salaries, but you see they're not as loyal as they used to be and the culture is becoming more corporate day by day. So uh, honestly, I would say just get, if you can move out to any city and learn or get a mentor, or if you just want a casual life, then yeah, just work remotely. Yeah. <laughs> for AI productivity within coding. What you see even in the image and video generation is it's like 90 to 95% perfect, but there's always a few things wrong. And it's the same with text generation LLMs. There will be one or two things off and as suitable as AI is for code generation, that missing 5%, which I think is gonna be very hard to get, you know, that last 5% actually perfect, which is what we've seen so far. That's a big issue with coding because if one line doesn't compile, if one line doesn't work, then the whole thing breaks. So you can't just be generating code without understanding it because then you can't debug things that are wrong. You can't identify them. In a perfect world, the AI would be reading your entire, you know, 100,000 line code base and you could just tell it, hey, I want to add this feature and it would go and do that. But as any developer working with AI now would tell you, number one, it can't do that at all. So you can't really feed it in a large input, even a full long file, it won't accept. And even if you could, it would probably have a few of those errors slash not really match your naming patterns or conventions, make certain things up. So you'd still have to go in and fix it, which 
which could in the current state even take longer than just writing it yourself. So the ideal way to use it now is to maybe just generate a starter function, some boilerplate or complete a line where it's already very clear what you're going to write. However, for those larger tasks, it's still very manual. And the reality of working as a developer is most of it is editing code, is reading, understanding and changing things that are already written to fix bugs, make small changes and similar. That's the reality of how things work now. So with the AI not being able to understand code in the way that a human can, it is still a very long way from doing the majority of development work, especially when you're dealing with production code. If you're dealing with a, you know, fun sample project, completely different story, it can probably build something for you pretty quick. But especially within companies, legacy code bases, huge repositories, it's not really doing the heavy lifting for you. It's just doing a small subroutine. So that's my uh, assessment of the current state of AI. I would not at this point in time, listen to the NVIDIA CEO, other tech influencers saying, well, it's over stopping to make videos completely because of this. We're just not there yet. And once we do get there, hopefully you could already be in a position to take advantage of it where you're maybe already an established software engineer five, 10 years down the road. And then you already have that kind of credibility. You've mastered the meta programming aspect. So it looks like everybody keeps saying like, continue to program, continue to program. Here's when you, yeah, here's, Here's when you need to think, like, here's when you need to wonder, um, here's when you know that they're about to automate programming. When they've automated being a lawyer and when they've automated being a, uh, going to a doctor, when you don't even need to go to a doctor anymore. I think those two jobs, although more vague than uh, Maybe I'm biased. I'm not saying my job is harder than than uh, than um, programming. I'm just saying a lot of the things that I have to do, the information, like let's say Python has probably only been around for like 10, 15 years, where like, I don't know, cardiovascular information has been around Probably there's 60 years of great information, probably the last 20, 20 years or more. Like there's more textbooks on probably like the heart is what I'm saying. So it might be easier to automate going to a doctor than being a programmer where you have to change stuff up. Um, or at least not, not the surgical part, but at least having it like speak to a doctor. Um, that's where you need, need that's, when you when when they've automated everybody else's job except programmers then that's when you know like we are you know programming is next because programming is more challenging in my opinion hot take hot take <laughs> but on that i think i'm gonna end it here tonight really appreciate you guys um uh, i think i did a lot better job with the audio and the camera and the light setup it's unfortunate. Um, couldn't get some more of you guys in here tonight, but it's all good. We're on a journey. I think I'm looking forward to Apple is having an announcement about their AI, and they've been talking smack that their AI is going to be better than everybody else's. So um, look out for that next month. I think it's in June, their developer conference. Also, look in the description if you want to hang out with me in a Discord. I tried to hang out with everybody, but nobody, everybody was busy, so... Might try to do that some more if you come through. Like some of you guys keep messaging me and telling me like you want to talk to me. And it's like, I, I want to talk to you, but you don't come through. Like I'm here. And uh, the Discord, if you support me, pay $15. I promise I'll talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, especially right now when the channel is small. And I guess that's it. Deuces.